What is up guys, Taiki here, and in this video I'll be addressing a very common question. How does EIP 1559 affect MEV and how does it affect Keeper DAO? If you like the content, please like and subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section below. So let's get started. So the, to the three topics that I'll be going over in this video is first, do a quick refresher on what MEV is. Second, talk about how EIP 1559 changes the gas structure of Ethereum transactions and Ethereum mining. And lastly, I'll be talking about how the incentives of Ethereum miners change after EIP 1559. Uh, I think that's going to be a really interesting topic to talk about. But first, a recap. What is MEV? What is miner extractable value? I think the best way to go uh, to explain MEV is through an example. So let's say there's an arbitrage opportunity uh, in the price of Ethereum, and there's a price discrepancy between Uni and Sushi where the price differs by $1,000. So Bob, an arbitrager, can buy Ethereum on Uni and sell it on Sushi and book a $950 profit, assuming that the transaction gas is $50 to you know do this arbitrage. But obviously in a free market, Bob can't just keep doing this forever. You know, other market participants like Sarah is gonna say, you know, give me, I, I want a part of that profit. I'll pay $100 in gas so I can front run Bob's bid and book a $900 profit. And then Bob says, you know what, screw you, I'm gonna bid $200. And as you can see, this starts a gas bidding war between arbitragers and market participants to capture arbitrage. And the profit opportunity for these arbitragers will just, uh, just go down, right? And let's say in this scenario, Sarah just bids $9.99 and screw over Bob and take the free dollar. So in this case, MEV, to think about MEV, we can think about Bob's original profit opportunity to be nine fifty, but Sarah only only profit one dollar. So MEV right here is nine forty nine, aka nine forty nine nine hundred forty nine dollars of the profit were sucked in by the miners, and they were lost by the market participants. And this is happening every single day on Ethereum. And as you can see from this story, um, these trading bots that you know trying to arbitrage uh, opportunities everywhere extracted $100 million in 30 days, right? That's a lot of money that's, you know, bidding gas up. And this is a negative externality for people like you and I, who are just trying to like make swaps and, you know, lend and borrow uh, crypto assets on Ethereum because these bots are just, you know, front running each other and like bidding gas up, which obviously we don't want. But more importantly, now that you have a better understanding of what MEV is, you know, how does EIP 1559 change you know, the gas structure of Ethereum. And there's a lot of misconceptions here, so I think this video will clear up a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of confusion. So this graphic is from Uncommon Core, and it does a good job of explaining like, what is today's gas structure on the left, and how will the gas structure look like after EIP 1559? <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> okay, so today, it looks like this. So when a miner mines a block, they get a subsidy, a block subsidy of two Ethereum, and then they also get all the fees that is generated within that block. But with EIP 1559, they get the same subsidy of two ETH, but the fee will be split into two, uh, two sections. First will be the base fee, which gets burnt, right? That's the deflationary effect that a lot of people talk about, but also the miner will receive a tip from the transaction. And you know, the base fee gets burnt, and we don't know what the proportion of the, the tip between the tip and the base fee is going to be that's not announced yet but the tip you know is going to go to the miners and this is where this is where mev is going to come from you know people that want to you know get their transactions there will st still tip miners to get their tra uh, transaction across so mev will still exist post eip 1559 despite the burning of the base fee so the popular misconception amongst a lot of people is that you know they think gas must be high uh, for KeeperDAO to make money. And that's not the case. It's that MEV must exist in order for KeeperDAO to profit. That's the correct way. Because the because the giga, giga brains at KeeperDAO is essentially saying, you know, let's hide MEV from miners, right? And in this case, you know, why are we paying $949 to the miners and why are we only capturing $1? Why don't we cooperate and share profits with each other, right? where you know, Bob can take the first arbitrage opportunity, Sarah can take the second arbitrage opportunity, and just keep coordinating with each other and make more money that way. And to, in, today's, in today's scenario, in a free market, a bunch of trading bots, a lot of, a lot of arbitrage bots, are trying to capture you know, each individual arbitrage, but they're keeper down. They can coordinate with each other, keep like saying, you can have the first arbitrage, I'll take the second one, you can take the third one, I'll take the fourth one, etc. The coordination game. So. We talked about EIP 1559, we talked about MEV and Keeper DAO, 
But most importantly, this EIP-1559 is going to change the incentives of ETH miners. And this is a complicated topic, but I'll walk over uh, how it's going to do that. So we talked about the gas structure and obviously ETH miners are like really sad, right? They're saying that, you know, we used to make a lot, a lot of money, but now we, we only make, you know, a lot of money. Uh, people are just complaining. You see stuff like this where people are saying, stop EIP-1559, you know, Ethereum is evil, like we're going to make less money, like what the hell? And there's like a lot of story about like, you know, miners are planning a 51% attack on ETH, right? I, I think all this is a boatload of BS, but you know, it's happening regardless. So if, if, if you, in, in the recent uh, Bankless podcast with Hasu, uh, where they talked about EIP-1559, Hasu mentioned that in his research, he found out that in today's gas fees, right, uh, out of the fees, around half is coming from transaction fees and half is coming from MEV. And the way I like to think about this 50-50 uh, this breakdown is the transaction fee is sort of like a fixed revenue for the miners, right? Like regardless of what which block uh, the miners mine, the fee that they receive from the transaction, like the base transaction themselves is relatively fixed, right? But the MEV aspect is variable. In times of high price volatility, you know, market participants are gonna wanna get their transactions across in, case, in order to not get liquidated or just like to capture a short opportunity or whatnot. And when price is really volatile, MEV will be much higher because there's just so much more activity uh, on Ethereum. You probably noticed that you know, when Bitcoin dumps 10%, gas is like 300 or something, right? So MEV is variable in a sense. And I asked the question to Fiscontis and Hasu about how miners currently collect uh, MEV. And they confirmed that right now, as of today, miners are essentially passively collecting MEV just from market participants spitting uh, gas up with, with themselves. And this makes sense because if you think about miners, they're like machinery, like GPU experts, right? They don't really care about DeFi. They don't care about the future of finance Ethereum. They're just in Ethereum mining for the money. So they don't really care about like MEV. They're just happy that they're making a lot of money right now. And this raises an in interesting topic where, you know, right now the MEV that the miners are capturing is called benign MEV. And this is MEV that's passively collected just by uh, mining themselves. And, you know, people are just trying to arbitrage liquidate, uh, liquidations, etc. But there's a second type of MEV that's currently not as popular which might you know, grow in popularity post EIP-1559, which is malicious MEV. And this is where sophisticated miners extract additional MEV by including their own arbitrage transactions. So let's think, let's think back about the original example of the $1,000 arbitrage opportunity. Bob will bid $50 in gas you know, to capture that, but the miners can notice that you know, this is Bob's transaction. Let's bid $100 right, for this transaction. So if Bob wants to, you know, actually capture this arbitrage, he has to bid over $100, like let's say $110. So miners, can, sophisticated miners can do this by just front running opportunities on the Ethereum mempool and just create, artificially create MEV, uh, and, which is evil, right? Which is like not great for market, market participants. It's gonna bid gas up for you know, people like you and I. It's a negative externality, obviously bad. So another way to think about it is like right now, 50% of my revenue is from MEV, right? It's passively collected benign MEV. But what happens after EIP 1559? Well, let's, we don't know the, uh, the breakdown, right? We don't know how it's going to be proportioned, but let's assume that the base fee that it's going to be burned is 25% of this entire uh, fee structure, right? And I'm making a, I'll be making a lot of assumptions because I simply do not know uh, that the Ethereum Foundation like hasn't really like share this publicly. So yeah, let's assume it's 25%. So we can uh, make it look like this, right? 25% base fee, 75% tip reward. But if, if gas is being burnt, like what percent of revenue is going to be from ABV in this scenario? So in the original scenario, it was 50-50. But what if the base fee gets burnt, right? Well, how will the proportion change? Well, just doing simple math, it's going to look like this where 33% is going to come from the transaction base fee and 67% is going to come from MEV. And this is really important because, you know, the proportion of revenue that the miners receive is now like much more uh, consisting of MEV, right? Instead of 50%, now 67% of miner revenue uh, is coming from MEV. And think back to, you know, these, you know, these crybabies who are, uh, that are Ethereum miners, they're going to be, they'll, they, they'll feel like they're entitled to their past revenue that they received pre-EIP-1559. 
So, you know, I asked myself this question, like, is it possible that 8 miners start extracting more malicious MEV from the network? Now that MEV consists of more, uh, consists like the majority of the revenue that they generate from mining, could it, can, can Ethereum miners be incentivized to start creating trading bots that front run opportunities to raise the amount of MEV that they can extract from each block? It's a valid question to ask. And ultimately this is like the problem that Keeper DAO, that the Keeper DAO team is trying to solve, right? The, the Giga Chats, right? So in a world where MEV extraction is congesting the network, keepers need to cooperate. Let's share profits with each other, not the miners. And to conclude the video, I'll share some tweets from Crypto Messiah, who's also a raging Keeper DAO rook bull. And you know, he says, what's the most talked about upcoming ETH development? EIP 5059, right? Everyone talks about, you know, ultrasound money, uh, like deflationary token, oh my God, ETH is gonna go up so much. But that's gonna come at the expense of miners losing their revenue. But how will miners uh, compensate for lost fees? Well, they might extract more MEV, through, like malicious MEV, right? And who can protect everyone from this? Keeper DAO, right? And also in the five months of operation, you know, their treasury is now at a sexy $50 million. And starting early May, we, can, we get to vote and govern on what to do with this treasury. The, the main gripe with KeeperDAO, the Rook token right now, is that right now the governance token doesn't do anything, right? Because there's no governance, it's a governance token. But starting May, I'm gonna get to vote. And, that, and this entire video is sort of like the, my bullish case on KeeperDAO. In the future, starting July, whenever EIP 1559 rolls out, EIP 1559 is going to be what everyone's going to be talking about. And uh, as a result of that, MEV will also be a huge topic. And in crypto is just a market full of narratives, right? Like Bitcoin's a narrative, like all these like things like 10x, 20x, it's all narrative. Oh, it's the future of X. And, you know, a few months from now, I think MEV and EIP 1559 is going to be what a lot of people will be talking about, so I think a lot of value will accrue to Keeper DAO uh, as of that, as 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 of that way. So, how does EIP fifteen fifty nine affect MEV? Well, I hope that answer. I hope this video answered that question. And you know, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. You know, these videos do take a lot a lot of time to pr to, to prepare for. And uh, if you want to talk to me and talk to the community uh, who are my subscribers. Um, I have a Discord channel that I recently created, and I try to join the voice channel every single day so I can just talk to anyone that wants to, you know, hop on the voice chat. So yeah, thank you for watching, have a nice day, and make sure to like and subscribe, and leave a comment to support my channel to help it grow. Thank you.